All right, we're ready to roll. All right. Welcome to this month's partners meeting. My amazing partner there in the orange has a mandatory class that he has to be in for the region and for international. So he's headed there with our owner, Scott Agnew and Stephanie Ochoa are already there. So we are gonna get started. We want to thank our two sponsors for today's meeting, Magnus Title Agency. So Angela, if you haven't had a chance to work with her on building your business or using Patty and her team, they're directly across the hall. And then we also wanna thank Old Republic Home Protection, which is Yvette Meyer, who's absolutely amazing and full of knowledge if you have questions regarding home warranties. You need to have those memorized for this. Uh, you got the clicker, Charles? I can get something on Charles. the next card. <laughs> yes, bear with me. <laughs> Who's marveling at his notebook? Sorry, I was distracted by it. Uh, right. so, uh, Charles is my clicker, but I'm not going to have to tell him to click every time because he's going to pay attention. So holiday party. Um, we absolutely want to celebrate with you, obviously, as a Keller Williams Realty East Valley family. And because of COVID and everything that's going on right now, we're not sure what that looks like yet. Um, we know that we did a different type of Halloween party this year. And um, we definitely, like I said, want to be able to celebrate with you for the holiday party like we do every year. If you have suggestions, please bring those to the leadership team, to your staff, um, ALC members, so we know um, what your suggestions are so we can celebrate with each other. So healthcare package, if you guys have not had an opportunity to look at the healthcare packages and plans. Um, know that's something that we put in place for you. The tax saving plans, you guys, is incredible. Um, we missed, they were in the office on Monday and Tuesday. You're okay to move forward um, on that. Um, so you know you can directly reach out to them. Merrill Slater Insurance is directly across Warner over at ASU Research Park. That's their office. And you can meet with them directly over there and have a private meeting and decide what's best for you for health insurance, the tax deduction plan, and also supplement. Next. Um, next step. So this is the deal. If you guys are currently still using eEdge, um, it's covered in our off and it's covered here um, in our room. But this is regarding eEdge. If you're still using eEdge, know that eEdge is going away. Um, and so you definitely want to embrace command and, and you know, get, get past eEdge and market leader and get with command. So just know that eEdge is definitely about to be ended. And so you want, it's time to really embrace command. December 31st, eEdge ends. So this is the new view for Outfront. So we just wanted to let you know that Outfront has absolutely a new view for you to look at. It's online and that's available for you. So just wanted to make you aware of that. And this is what this looks like. And this is the Outfront magazine, if you guys aren't familiar with that. So this is a video we're gonna watch. Pretty amazing, you guys, through all of this, through COVID, for quarter three, this is your performance report. If you can click for me.
Yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're to make sure we get that link out <clears throat> for you guys where you can watch it. Um, separately, we'll make sure that we post that short little video. Pretty amazing, you guys, in the history of Keller Williams with all the challenges and politics and COVID and just everything going on that this was our best third quarter ever in the history of KW. All right. So congratulations. That is about you. And we're just really excited to celebrate that with you. And we will get this video out. It's shaking bacon. I have it. Next. He's I not paying attention. No, I hit the button. It's just a little bit of a lag here. There we go. Yes. Okay, so this is your all new KW Connect page. So if you guys have not been on KW Connect, definitely that you want to explore that. That has replaced our old KW when you used to go into the back office. KW Connect is one stop shop where you can get all, um, all that training. So thousands of hours of training, there's videos, there's top agents across the country that are actually sharing their systems and models. I know Carol Royce has got stuff on there. Um, so just, you don't have to recreate the wheel. There's no stealing in cells. And that's one of the blessings about Keller Williams is we are collaborative. We understand it's a relationship business and there's ample business to go around. So KW Connects where you can go watch all the videos for training. Um, you can see Keller Williams University courses. You'll literally just do a search for those. It's one-stop shop. Everything's right there for you. And uh, like I said, top agents collaborating, sharing their systems and models from around the world. So this is really cool. If you guys have not had a chance to see, there's tons of new designs um, in the back end for marketing. So we just got done with Memorial Day and Memorial Day had tons of different designs. They're already designed so you can pop them directly on your social media. Really fun, um, just amazing designs for you. Next. And this is a great example of, or it was Veterans Day, oops, Memorial Day. So you can customize them to you, but you've got birthdays, you've got holidays. It's all right there for you guys. They're designed for you. Go directly back into marketing and you will find these for you. So here we've got, this is great. This is through your new command. And when you actually post these different campaigns, you guys, they actually have the writing created for you now. So you do not have to do it yourself. So these are new quick posts in campaigns that you can plug directly in to your social media and the text is done for you, which is hugely powerful. So you don't have to think of something creative to say with the campaign that you've chosen to write. And here's another great example of these to choose from. So these are your email templates. So this is something that's different now in command also. They've actually released templates for your campaigns. So before you had campaigns there, but you were having to create your own templates. Now the templates, they're not all there yet, but you definitely have some incredible templates that are already created for your campaigns that you can just plug and play which is really, really exciting for you as agents that you're not having to create all that content by yourself. They are, my understanding is they are. Um, so here is also something new that's really cool with opportunities. And this is something that Command has just released. They are going to auto automatically let your client know as you guys are uh, going through the process. So one of the cool things you've noticed if you've really dug into command, it's so simple to use. Um, I can use it and I haven't had any formal training. Sorry, Charles, you can <laughs> attest to that. I've never been to one of your classes. Um, but the cool thing is now it's almost like our onboarding system. Like if you're using a Brivity or any of the other, um, you know, that you pay thousands of thousands of dollars for, this automatically will update your client as they move through the escrow process or what I consider 
a pipeline process. So pretty cool for you. Um, the command already does that. It's your pipeline built in as you move through a process with clients, but now they have the same thing for your clients as you move through the escrow process. So we wanna welcome our new associates. We've got Diane here in the front row. Yay! So Diane and her husband, Keith, are new associates, um, former business owners, and they're just really excited to have this new venture in real estate and do the same thing, create an amazing business for themselves. They are being mentored by uh, Mike, our very own Michael Bickford. So we've got Steve Karavelovic joined us, Veronica Castro has joined us this year. She's going to be coaching with me. She's actually on the Lux team. We've got Anaso Joe. Joe Bawana, he's one of our new agents. He's in coaching also. Nathaniel Kane McLavin. Lewis Lay is a new agent that is in coaching. And Rachel Watson has joined us. She's in coaching. And then we've got M Mickey Westmoreland. So you guys know we have coaching slash mentoring through our productivity coaching program. We have four top agents that do mentoring, which is mainly transactional support and walks you through everything that's available for you. In addition to the people that I didn't mention are actually have joined us and they are on teams. So our goal is to make sure anybody or they're experienced, of course. So our goal is anybody who joins Keller Williams Realty East Valley, we find a place for them and we find the support that they need to be successful. Next. Listings taken, let's celebrate October, 2020. Congratulations for individual agents, our very own David, who is on the panel today for listings. Awesome, David, congratulations. Thank you. Katie Walsh, my amazing partner and friend. She did three listings this, this last month. Doug Royce too, congratulations, Uncle Dougie. We've got the Miller team, holy <clears throat> spokes. Congratulations, Susan and Grant for seven listings. Sir. Woo! I heard him back there in their office. Yay! <laughs> Sir Coops are killing it. Husband and wife team, congratulations. You guys, five listings. Jamie Thompson of the Thompson Group, five listings. Valley Home Pros are killing it at four listings. And Muller Home Team at three. Congratulations, everybody. Those are awesome numbers. We need more and more listings. For our group. We've got Carol Royce team at 25 listings for October. Shanna Day team, holy smokes, 16 listings. And she's typically luxury. We can't wait to see those numbers, right? 16 listings. Congratulations, Matt Coaches. He is on our panel today. 10 <laughs> listings. That's awesome. Congratulations. Bill Olmstead's team, six listings home selling team of Randy and Janine, and she was on vacation most of last month, six listings. And of course, Team San Susi still killing it with five. Congratulations to our groups. Listing taken volume for October, individual listings, David Najafi, almost 1.7 million. I'll take that payday. He's gonna have a darn good November. Katie Walsh for 1.2, Doug Royce, for 600,000. Katie Evans, congratulations, Miss Katie, almost 600,000. Cynthia Worley, always killing it, um, just over half a million. And Jill Rother, congratulations, just over half a million. We're really proud of you guys as individual agents. Team, Sir Coof team, 3.7. 3.7 million for Sir Coofs. There's the Miller team, 2.6 million. Thompson Group, two million. Valley Home Pros, one and a half million. And the Mueller team, one and a half million. Congratulations to our individual and teams. Those are gonna be incredible paydays. Listing taken volume for October for our groups. Here we go. Carol Royce with those 25 listings, 11.8 million in listing volume. And we talked about Shannon Day with those 16 luxury listings. There she is at just over 8 million. Home coach team, 3.2. Home selling team of Randy and Janine, 2.8. Olmstead team, 2.5. And team San Susi, 1.4. Congratulations to all of our listing groups. 
individual this is your transactions so close transactions i'm sure that's yep right there on top so close transactions congratulations amy nelson she had four and a half closings in october steve hayhurst four tom wood four david najosh the najafi i barely got that out congratulations David, three closings and four listings. You're having a killer month. Katie Evans had three closings and Katie Walsh, three. <clears throat> Congratulations to our individual agents. Teams, Valley Hell, Home Pros, six closings. Number one team for closings. Congratulations. Lines team, five closings. The Miller team, five closings. CED Real Estate team. <laughs> there we go. Charles and Allie. Four listing, four closings. Congratulations, Mueller Home Team. Four closings. Congratulations, and the Thompson Group. Four closings. Congratulations to all of our individual team, individuals and teams. I would take any of your paydays from last month. Uh, I can honestly say. Um, and groups. Carol Royce's team. Congratulations. Thirty closings. Home selling team of Randy and Janine. Seventeen closings. Well, the topic of today is how to get your clients closing more and get yourself closing more transactions and working on getting your closing your clients throughout the transaction. And look at that. Matt is on the panel 15 closings from last month. Congratulations, Matt. The luxury group, we've got uh uh back, back, back. Coming back. Go back. We're not done. <laughs> this time he's ahead. San T Luxury Group, seven closing or nine closings. San Team San Susi, seven. Infinity Group, boy, that's a great closing for commercial residential side, six. And Olmstead Team, six. Congratulations to our groups. Now you can speak. <laughs> this is teamwork. This is awesome. Closed volume, October 2020. Individuals, congratulations, Tom Wood. Highest closed volume for individual, two million. David, 1.6. Steve Hayhurst, 1.6. Amy Nelson, yeah. almost 1.6. Katie Walsh, 1.3. And Katie Evans, 1.2. Congratulations to our individuals. Team, Valley Home Pro, number one team for closed volume, 3.6 million. Miller team, just over two. Uh, Muller Home team, just over two. The Lines, 1.7. CED, Charles and Ellie, one and a half million and Good Earth Real Estate, 1.3. Congratulations to all of our teams. <clears throat> and we've got groups, total closed volume. Carol Royce team for last year, not last year, last month, yeah. <laughs> not more than some people do in a year, by the way. Um, last month, 13.6 million in closed volume. The home selling team of Randy and Janine, 7 million last month in closed volume. Home coaches team, 4.2 million. Team San Susi, 3.6. Luxury group, 3 million. And Olmstead team, just over 3 million too. Congratulations to all of our groups on an amazing month. Broker Minute. Mike, you have something you want to talk about? Broker um, Mike, Broker Mike. Actually, what I want to talk about today is our panel. I want you guys to stay tuned. We're going to have a panel today on closing strategies. Awesome. And everybody on that panel is on, on these lists. So I definitely think they're going to be able to learn something hopefully today and, and participate with that. Yeah. So next, here we go. What is the top of this? Um, what's, the, what's the subject on this? Because I can't see the top of the screen. Home run awards. October Home Run Awards. Oh, Home Run Awards. Thank you. So, uh, you're going to have to announce the first A because I can't see. Amy and Garrett Lines. There we go. Amy and Garrett. Garrett Lines. Yay. And Angela Edwards, Carol Royce, Cliff Kinney, David, Diana Keller, and Carly Gibbs. We got a lot of home, home run awards this month, you guys. Elaine Sansusi, Hani, Jamie, Janine, and Randy, Jill Rother, Josh Randall, Joshua Kreis. Casey Teigen, Kathy and Andre Sukar, Sukoff. Who else is up there on the top right column? Katie Evans and Katie Walsh. 
Awesome. Leonard Saavedra, Lorraine Muller, Matt Coaches, Michael Hernandez, Missy Tatum, Paula Chavez, Shanna Day, Shawnee Moore, and Susan and Grant Miller. You guys, congratulations. So, you know, Home Run Award is something that um, this Market Center has done for many, many years. Um, John has felt strongly about this, I think, for all of 25 years, probably, um, since he's been with Scott Agnew. And, and this is where we celebrate people that are on track, have always been on track for capping with a closing and a listing. So really proud of you guys for being on track and just consistently having your business moving in the right direction. Next, October cappers, my goodness. Um, hopefully nobody's cut off on this screen, but congratulations. So remember, Keller Williams is a capping concept. We are not a split house. Yeah. So we're kind of the best of both worlds. We're the largest franchise worldwide, number one franchise worldwide. Um, and we're full service. And then also we have the beauty of you guys having being agent centric where it's about your brand and your business and being 100% or 100% plus because of the other opportunities that, that Keller Williams creates for you, one being profit sharing. So um, these are agents that all cap, so they are getting uh, officially 100% of their money and have the opportunity to be in a 100% plus club. So congratulations to Sherry Bader, Paula Chavez, Penny Gold, Steve Hayhurst, Jeremiah James, Jessica Morrell, David Najafi, Sally Prestia, Edward Robles, so Eddie Robles is up there, Jill Rother, Lindsay Sullivan and Valerie Taranjo. Congratulations to all of those cappers this month. That's awesome to see. First closings are listings in October. Woo, woo, woo. We Yay. love this. Yay. So Angela Edwards had her first closing for 422.5. Destiny Cobb, brand new agent, 325. Jessica Meyer is a new agent to us at 670. Missy Tatum at $4.99 and Wesley Fowler, $3.60. Congratulations for first awesome. closings awesome. with Keller Williams Realty East Valley. We're very proud of you for coming aboard and jumping in feet first. Listings, Angela Edwards took her first listing at $4.22.5 and Missy Tatum at $4.99.9. Happy birthday. Look at all these birthdays. So happy birthday. We started the month with Shannon Bells, the fifth, Kelly Kleinkoff, Doug Royce, Daniel Williams, Casey Teagan, Paige Stalkup, Jeff Gordon, David Maines, Michelle Bravo, Asia Coleman, Jennifer Collier, Lawrence Wortman. Congratulations, Lawrence. I can't see you, but I'm sure you're on here. Rachel Walk, Scott Graff, Katrina Oliver, Sean Nugan, Nguyen, Kathy Sombrio, Solange Fidel, Fideli, Chris Niederhauser, and Carol Royce. Congratulations. When you see any of these agents, you guys, if you're in the office, or even if you see them in a room on Zoom, tell them congratulations this month. And then we've got our happy anniversaries. Pretty shocking when I saw this. Good old Ruth, 23 years. So Len Carity has been with us for 12 years, which is awesome. Um, Shanna Day, 12 years with Keller Williams. Samantha Goledge, one year. Diane Hamilton, 15 years, you guys. It's just incredible to see. Ruth Hayden, 23. Our sweet, uh-oh. Cliff, is that what she was about to say? <laughs> is Cliff sweet? Am I sweet? I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're sweet. Did we lose? Uh, do we, we lose a microphone? I don't know. I'll go check on her in a minute, but I'm gonna finish the list. We've got Cliff Kenny, five years. That's sweet, Cliff. Sweet, Cliff Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> Josh <Great. Dodo> Randall, <laughs> 12 years. Leonard Saavedra, nine years. Elaine at 23 years. Okay. Oh, she's back. No, go ahead. Finish Rosa Wheat. And Rosa Wheat, one year. Yay, Rosa. Yeah. So what I, I was saying, what you guys probably couldn't hear, look at Ruth and Elaine. That's just amazing. 23 years with us. That's incredible. 
15, 12, you guys, congratulations. That's, that just shows tenure. And we love that our agents have joined us and are staying. So thank you for joining us for the awards portion. But more importantly, we now have our incredible ALC panel. Broker Mike is facilitating <laughs> that for us. And they are going to talk about, hopefully, well, we already know, our goal is to help support you in making more money. That's the bottom line. So that's really the topic today. And these are the experts that can make that happen. So I'm turning it over to Broker Mike and our ALC panel. Awesome, thank you. Great job, Nikki. Uh, and today what we wanna talk about with the ALC is closing strategies. Uh, that can mean different things to different people. So I wanna start off with Charles. What does okay. closing strategies mean to you? <laughs> so uh, we were discussing what to cover today and I thought I would at least mention the language of sales class that I gave, I, I wanted to end on closing uh, strategies, which to me meant language of sales. What are we saying to our clients to close, right? And so um, in the classroom, it's on the whiteboard, but I just wanted to really quickly recap what that class was all about. And in order to effectively close, uh, we have to do some really good probing to uncover their circumstances, right? So we're learning what's important to the client as we probe to understand their needs because circumstances create needs. And then needs, when we support those needs, that's closing. And there's several different ways we can do that. And I think my understanding of uh, what we wanted to cover today is part and parcel to uh, some actual uh, tactical, you know, type scenarios that I'm sure the other uh, agents ALC members will, will discuss. Um, but I just wanted to discuss some, some of the example closes uh, and, and kind of tell you about what those are. There are too many to list, so I'm just giving you a few examples to give you an idea. Uh, I'm gonna preface this with just saying that while we can't cover it all today, I would highly recommend that you all dive into the language of sales, get some books like Exactly What to Say, Fanatical Prospecting, uh, there's just great knowledge in, in print where you can develop your language of sales and get better at closing. Um, so as you develop those circumstances, uh, understanding of circumstances and, and support the needs, uh, you could use the now or never close. Uh, a now or never close uh, is something that you, you mentioned is a limited availability or part-time availability such as uh, for real estate, it might be DPA. So we all remember, I can't remember if it was last year or the year prior, uh, when the DPA programs were announced uh, in October, they were gone like within the month. So uh, now or never close could be, as a, for example, a DPA. The summary close, you might use something called the T where you literally list pros and cons on one side or the other of the T. And um, then uh, you summarize the, the needs that you've supported, and then you might ask a question, which is another type of close. So you can just summarize and then use a hard close or an assumptive close to, uh, to close your client. Uh, then you've got the sharp angle. This is really useful when they are talking about your commission. The sharp angle close uh, is, as an example, you can use an if-then sandwich. So if they're asking for a percentage off of your commission, you could insert an if-then sandwich and say, okay, if I take you know, a percentage off my commission, then will you dot, 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 whatever the answer may be, right? And uh, so you can use if then sandwiches there, just study the sharp angle. It can be really good at countering. You can also turn that around and say, if then will you accept less because you're now being paid less, we might offer less. So Jason Wells has talked a great deal about how to offer, you know, tiered levels of service and maybe at certain commission levels, maybe you charge 7% for, a concierge type service and 4% for someone who, you know, is getting their listing on the MLS, not much more, whatever the case may be. You get, I think you get what I'm saying. The question close, and uh, this is really good for visual learners. So if you know somebody that has to see something to talk through it, you could literally draw what I call the box and you can draw all of the circumstances and needs that they have and, uh, <clears throat> at the side of the box and then draw all of the things about a certain house or about a certain situation that solves those needs. 
and just ask the question, what's it going to take to get you in the box? It's literally a physical representation on paper of what you're trying to talk through. Uh, and then the final one I'll just mention today is the assumptive close. And again, from that language of sales uh, book, uh, the, what is it called? Exactly what to say in real estate. Uh, so just a few more phrases here. Most people is a good one. So you might say something like most people at this point would dot, dot, dot. You know, the next steps are signing the uh, buyer broker agreement, whatever the case may be. And uh, so I have most people and what happens next as examples. So anyway, that was my understanding of <laughs> <laughs> closing strategies. Well, it, there's two ways to look at it. You know, the, the individual closing strategies and then the transactional ones, right? Right. And so that's the other side of the, of the, of the uh, page that we want to take a look at now is closing strategies transactionally. What's going on in today's market? How is today's market different? And what strategies are agents using to get transactions closed? Um, so, uh, David, what, what's different about the market today and what are you doing that's different? Well, as we all know, this is a very competitive market. Um, the, the, the buyers are out there. They're, they're, there's a lot of buyers out there. The money's uh, cheap. And um, the sellers are actually recognizing that. So we see a lot of more houses come on the market. It's not that we have a shortage of homes coming on the market, the fact is we're getting a lot of buyers who are buying. We burn through them really quick. We burn through them real quick. So yeah. I think we had 13,000 homes come on the market the month before, and out of that, almost all of them left. You know, yeah. So we have the buyers and the sellers are recognizing that and coming in. So <clears throat> my biggest point when I'm dealing with my clients is two words, no, no surprises. So we start from the beginning and set the expectations. If you're dealing with a seller, you need to set the expectations. One of the most important things is the price. Now every seller thinks that the house is worth way more. And we all know if we don't price it right, sooner or later in this transaction, you're gonna fail. Whether it's at um, appraisal or, or somewhere else, um, if you don't have the house prepared right, you're going to fill in inspection. There's going to be a list of things to do. And the sellers are probably going to say, no, let's just move on to the next buyer, which is might be true, might be not. So what I do with my sellers, I'll make sure that the house is ready to go. No clutter, of course. And I usually get most of the, the biggest items. So you do you do a pre-inspection first? I do not not with an inspector, but I, we all know what is usually on the inspection report. Mm -hmm. You have the roof, you have electrical, you got plumbing. Okay. So one of the things that you always want to make sure is, and it's you know top shape is the roof. Breaking the roofer, I can go up there. There's always broken tiles. There's always mud caps missing and everything else. Let's get those taken care of before the inspector goes up there. Because once the inspector goes up there, it's gonna re recommend a roof inspection. And once the roofer comes in, guess what? They're gonna want a new roof. Right. So let's just take care of that before it even gets there. So you're trying to anticipate the things, the conditions that you want to address in it. Right, and you want, you want, to, you want to definitely uh, let, make your seller aware of it, that these are, the, these are the situations we're going to face so let's just face it now. Well, and when, when you anticipate uh, what's going to happen in the transaction, uh, when that does happen, you, your confidence level for your client goes way up. They know they're working with the right agent Correct. because they could tell them what was coming next. Correct. And you know, always down the road, you can always say, I told you so. So you can always <laughs> bring it up and they'll, they'll, be, they'll be a little bit and more be prepared. prepared to, to, um, to comply. And if you're talking about the um, the other side, the buyers, you want to make sure that it's not always it's it's not always the sale that needs you you need to worry about. It's it's the process of it, and you need to be the trusted advisor. And what I do is actually I, I follow um, a, a one of the sheets that Magnus provides for us. 
and it's the process of the selling. I go through that with my buyer and I explain every single point of it. So they know every step of the way that what has to happen. And um, I'll just make sure my buyers are re responsive. And that's one of the problems we have with buyers if they don't respond uh, you know, right away. And I'll, I'll keep them on their toes and make sure that if I send them something, they respond right away. Awesome. Brad, what about you? What's, what do you see that's different uh, in the market today and how are you responding to that? Well, um, a lot of this can be overlap between what, what Charles and, and David have said. I'm sure what uh, Matt Coach is going to add. Um, you know, the one thing that happens right now is the buyer consultation and the listing appointment have to really be on point. Like you can't cut any corners mm -hmm. and allow the possible client or your client to kind of want to rush through that process. And, you know, and so I'm very clear with them not to insult their intelligence. I know you've bought and sold several homes, or if they've never bought a home before, you know, say, look, it's really important that we go through these things. And so like David, I will give them, I will arm them with something to leave behind, not to overwhelm them with a stack of papers and pamphlets and, you know, buying and selling guides and stuff like that. But to, you know, I, I always equate it to um, when I had my first child, my wife encouraged us to go to um, a birthing class. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did, right? I, you know, I wanted to be there for her. But actually what helped me was when I was in the delivery room, I had very little if no anxiety. Right. I knew exactly what to do. I knew it was expected. You knew it was coming. Next. I knew what, what needed to, <laughs> what happened with her. And, you know, even when I was traveling, you know, and she's like, I think I'm in labor. I'm like, okay, well, how long in between contractions did I have to go through the process with her? Well, the buying consultation, you know, um, and the listing presentation, the more on point they are, the more like, the, the, the more sophisticated it is without like overwhelming them with information, uh, the better end result you have. And, um, and uh, actually, you know, Mike and I were talking about it earlier, and I think David was in the room as well. Um, we are always managing expectations. And so I, I don't want to manage expectations so that I've got a hall pass. I want to manage ex expectations uh, by uh, truly understanding what their needs are, buyers or sellers, pre-listing, pre-qualifying, getting all that so that by the time I'm in the listing appointment, buyer or seller, I understand basically pretty close to hitting the bullseye of what, what their needs are. And then I can, I can be, you know, nimble to, to move towards those needs. And I always go back to need. I always go back to motivation and I always go back to, you know, what their wants were. Right. And so by setting those expectations earlier, arming them with the, with the literature, arming them with the vocabulary, and then telegraphing out the next few steps so that there's, you know, there's less anxiety, right? At the end of the day, all my clients to say, yeah, wow, that was a process, but you really made it easy. It's you, pre you prepared them for it. Right, right. And so, and we, you know, and we can also, um, you know, overcome some challenges. You know, we can close our buyers, we can close our sellers, we can close uh, the cooperating agent and their client, lister or buyer, um, uh, as well by you know being prepared, telegraphing out, and having a very very good, robust, open line of communication with them and creating relationships. So creating uh, trust is huge with that other agent. Right. So reach out. So you know, I guess to answer your question is whatever we did before, we're doing it better, and we're not cutting any corners. I'm certainly not. And, um, and knowing that, you know, buyers get buyer's remorse and sellers want the world. They want to overlist their house. They don't want to declutter. They don't want to clean. They don't want to fix anything, right? Two spectrums and finding a way to make it win-win. So setting expectations that way. That's so, awesome. So we've had to up our game and quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, uh, Matt Coaches, what about you? What are you uh, doing differently out there these days? Um, just in line with the theme of what everyone else has been saying, you know, the biggest thing is setting expectations. Um, and I think the, the, what's changed the most in our business lately in regards to that is having a consistent conversation around those expectations. So, you know, having a, um, a written out process, things to cover kind of like a checklist in a buyer consultation, 
because I, I mean, just you end up getting so much knowledge over the years. Every transaction you learn something from, and if you're not writing that down, and and having some kind of a guide for yourself in those consultations, whether they be buyer or seller, inevitably you're going to walk out and you're going to say, oh man, totally forgot to talk about low appraisals because that's a thing right now. Um, you know, and next year you're not going to forget about low appraisals, but maybe there's some new item. And uh, so it's important to have um, checklist really at the very simplest um, as a part of your consultations uh, that you constantly add to or delete from or tweak. Um, and then also it'll help so that you don't tangent off and cover too much. Uh, one of the things I found myself doing was two hour buyer consultations. Right. Um, that's boring for everybody, but you know, especially us, it's like, oh my gosh, you don't want to get to the end of or halfway through a buyer consultation and be bored. Your clients will see that. So, you know, streamlining and, and it'll help with that having an, an or you know some kind of a checklist um so just to echo what everyone else has been saying you know have a system have a process set expectations that's great and i'm a huge fan of checklists it's uh, as far as the risk reduction standpoint uh it's the only way to go to make sure you cover the things you need to cover with every client every time hugely important uh, what I what I wanted to ask you guys about next is, uh, can you give us uh, an example in a transaction you've had lately of something that's unique to this market, like the low appraisals or or issues with uh, repairs or anything like that that's been a little different because of the type of market we're in? Uh, anybody want to volunteer to take that one first, Charles? Well, I just this is actually a continuation of what both David and Brad were talking about, but it's an example. Uh, a lot of buyers are experiencing buyer fatigue right now because we're on average right now, people are writing three offers before one even gets entertained and it doesn't mean it even comes to fruition. So buyer fatigue is a very real thing. And uh, in, in uh, concert with what I was talking about with language of sales, I actually have a few tactical things that I can share uh, with people to make that you know, fruitful is the two types of people phrase is a great question to ask up front. And you can say there's two types of people in this world you know, and, and explain the buyer fatigue, what it is, what's happening in the market, so they have some some perspective. And say so there's two types of people in this world: people that would be discouraged by that, or people who are going to go out and find the house that they that they desire. It does two things: it, it'll identify up front if they say I'm the kind of person that wants to go to my house. At least you know what what page they're on. Can I ask you a question? How do you identify buyer fatigue? How can you tell when it's a factor? Well, I think it's very important what everyone was saying about covering it up front so it doesn't become a factor. So that's the whole purpose of asking that question is you're reminding them up front that they are committed to a tough process. And that way, when they hit the tough process, they're, they're expecting. It. Um, if they say, I'm the type of person that's just going to roll over, then, you know, yeah. at least you know what you're dealing with up front. <laughs> All right. So especially with the first time buyers, you know, they, they take it so personally when you get rejected. Mm -hmm. But if you get them prepared and, and say, hey, we're going to get rejected a couple of times before we hit the jackpot then then they they'll be more prepared for it mm -hmm. i think it's important so uh, so anybody it. else want to share a story well yeah um I'll, I'll share one you know recent uh you know we we had written eight offers the seventh the seventh offer and i'll get to that because we we disclosed that we had written another offer right on offer number seven they were hemming and hawing around what, what they were going to accept. And my clients didn't have the luxury of waiting for them to make a decision. So I just let offer number seven know to counter terms of acceptance back. Meanwhile, we're going to go out and we're going to look for another house. Offer number eight, we said, hey, look, we have an offer in. Um, we're not, we're, we're kind of getting the runaround. And so we're, we're disclosing to you right now that we're going to write an offer. We have another offer in. Well, they ended up taking that offer, offer number seven, right? And, you know, basically we want it because, you know, uh, as I explained to the listing agent, I had a very reasonable buyer, very reasonable. He's not going to ask for the world, right? He just wants a sound roof, you know, AC that's working, even if it's older, you know, everything needs to be in generally good repair, but, you know, he's not going to ask for everything. Right? And then we get into the inspection and we have one of the worst possible inspections you could have for a reasonable buyer, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, uh, the pool equipment was leaking. Um, there were pop-up heads that were missing, and we saw that during the showing. 
Um, the roof was original, it was an original owner. Uh, the house is 18 years old. And uh, so, you know, I had already set in the buyer consultation and through a number of conversations with my client, you know, that, look, should something come up, remember that we talked about, like, there, there's not going to be a benefit for the seller to necessarily replace the AC, replace the underlayment or the roof or whatever the big ticket item is, but they need to get it functional so it can be warranted and, and you know, and so have those conversations. So he already felt like he was paying at the top of the market, but he was okay with like, you know, if I pay at the top market, then I better be getting a good rate, right? You know, the event, he already covered that himself. So he had a great rate, he had more buying power and we go under contract and he wanted a new AC and he wanted the under limit replaced. I said, I think that's gonna be a hard deal for the seller, right? Because that's not, what you, that's not what you told me. If I go back to the conversation, you said you would be a reasonable buyer. So let's just, you know, we'll discuss what reasonable was. Anyway, he ended up with a, a credit in lieu of any and all repairs for most of the repairs. Uh, they fixed the pool equipment and they fixed some of the other stuff that need to be done. And then he got a credit for the HVAC. And then, um, and then we got a $25,000 under uh, appraised value. <laughs> so you got two stories in one here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so my reasonable buyer says, uh, look, I'm not going to pay it at the top of the market and not get a new roof and a new AC and have to come up with 25000 out of pocket. The seller did not want to come, uh, come up or come all the way down. And so she suggested meeting in the middle. And, um, and my client's like, that's not reasonable to me. Use the word reasonable, Brad. It's not reasonable to me to not get everything I wanted on the repairs. You know, I was okay with it as long as it's, as it was appraised, but I'm not gonna come out of pocket and not have those things. So, so we either need to get the, the repairs for me to come anything out of pocket to meet them halfway or we're done. And so they walked. The seller wouldn't acquiesce and my buyer would not acquiesce, you know, and he was okay with that. And he had plenty of buyer fatigue because, you know, he had written eight offers, right? With eight offers, you know, but, you know, he's like, I'm not going to get pinned into, you know, this right now. So we're out, we're out showing homes again. I he, took, he took a month off. Having to deal with that. It's yeah. always... He took over a month it's off. Probably an Asian but, fatigue as well. But he's <laughs> back. <Yeah. laughs> you know, but, you know, that's what we signed up for, you know, um, you know, and to that point, you know, we have to, we have to be the strength and the pillar for them. And if we're like waving our hands and freaking out, then they're going to wave their hands and freak out. And so, you know, these things happen. Yeah. You know, Mr. Crumbaker, these things happen. We talked about this. We covered this in the buyer consultation. We covered this, you know, when we saw that report. Right. And so, you know, we, we just tried to, I, I use the word equanimity. You know, I, I like to have some equanimity in the whole thing. And that at least, you know, there's a bunch of Fonzies in there. Everybody's cool, you know. Bunch of Fonzies? Fonzies. I love it. I love it. So, um, but yeah, yeah. So that's my most recent story. Awesome. That might Matt, what about you? Do you have one you want to share? Hi, uh, everyone can hear me again. I it just, it, you have a, a story you want to share about a transaction lately that has had um, been affected by the issues we're seeing more of these days, whether it's appraisal, repairs, uh, just- Yeah, so absolutely. I mean, and, and creative problem solving is, that's one of the biggest points of value I think we offer to our clients. And, you know, along the, the precursor to this story, um, you know, I have, a, I have the benefit of having a team meeting every week with 10 great agents and everyone contributes to the group think. Um, we, we solve a lot of problems in that meeting uh, every week, whether it's appraisal issues or comping properties or, or whatever it is. And so um, first and foremost, I would encourage agents who aren't on a team um, to make some connections in the office. You know, feel free to call in um, to any of these meetings or anyone on the ALC and, and ask for some creative problem solving. That's Sometimes the answer is simpler than, than you think it is. It would be, um, you just gotta think of it. And there's a lot to think about in this business. Um, you know, the, some of our biggest wins have come uh, towards the end, uh, negotiating around major items on the inspection. Today's buyers are paying top dollar or above top dollar. And that's just a product of the market. 
um, a lot of the homes aren't in top dollar shape. And so you might come to an issue where a seller doesn't want to pay out of pocket for something, um, you know, a new roof, a new AC. When a seller hears that, they think that's six grand out of my pocket. Um, buyers don't want to have to pay top dollar, um, relinquish all their savings on down payment to make a deal work, possibly come out of pocket to make up for a short appraisal and then have to handle a major expense. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we like to do is get items paid for, um, get it to get an invoice, get it sent over to title, title pays it at close of escrow on behalf of the seller, and then the work is done after. So um, we find that to be pretty safe. Obviously, you have to trust your contractors. I wouldn't go with anyone you've just met. Um, someone who's done work before, you know where they live, that type of thing. Um, we use Home Depot a lot just because they're trusted Lowe's. Um, and then, you know, certified certified roofers and all that. Um, and that's that's saved many deals for us because all of a sudden the seller's like, oh, well, if I don't have to see it go out of my account now, um, and, you know, their concerns about getting the work done in a timely manner right before closing, like, it's all just a, a mess. And so um, Magnus Title... <laughs> coincidentally our sponsor patty over there you know helps us with all that and lining it up and and holding everyone accountable so um for what that's worth hopefully that helps someone out today but you just just get creative and i think the biggest thing is talk talk to other agents in the office it's the greatest thing about keller williams east valley is everyone i've ever met is more than willing to share that's awesome um there's one thing that we didn't cover and i i just want to go back and, and hit this, and I don't want to spend another hour on this, but just quickly, are you guys using anything uh, that you uh, that's a new tool to get properties under contract now, where it's harder to get your buyer uh, under contract because of the market? Are you using things like uh, as-is clauses, uh, escalator clauses, waiving appraisals? Are you are you guys and uh, Brad, I want you to be honest with me about how you feel about that, okay? Yeah. Because I have a feeling we feel the same way, but everybody knows these tools are out there. I want to discuss them a little bit. So share, share what you're thinking. Uh, I mean, I'm not a fan of waiving appraisal. Uh, Why? Um, because there, there's very little recourse after that, you know, especially if you're outside of the due diligence period, you know, then, then you know, then you're toast. Uh, then you talk about buyer's remorse. You, you don't you don't have a happy buyer at that point. Um, well, plus, you never know what's coming. I mean, well, you right. may, when you waive an appraisal contingency, you may think it'll come in five thousand, six thousand low, yes. and then it comes in twenty five thousand low. So this is this is what we'll do. Um, uh, <coughs> so I've used appraisal uh, contingency or appraisal contingency waivers, right? So we're not waiving appraisal. We're, we're waiving the contingency for the waiver or for the appraisal. And what we'll do is um, we'll go in and we'll, we'll make sure our due diligence period is like 12 or 14 days. And we'll order the appraisal right away uh, with the agreement uh, that, uh, that the buyer understands that they're gonna be out of pocket, you know, the, you know, four or $500 for appraisal. And they need to get the home inspection done. And then if, if we have a low appraisal, we can still cancel for Binza related That's items. That's huge. And That's so- so um, for delivering the, pro, uh, the, the contract, you know, on surface, there's an appraisal contingency waiver. And if the uh, listing agent is, isn't sophisticated enough to understand that we're still gonna cancel in due diligence, then that's on them. I'm not here to train the other agent. I'm here to get my offers accepted. Same thing with escalation clauses. If I'm a listing agent, I'm just gonna counter back whatever, you know, if they said that they're gonna go to 375, uh, okay. okay. Lifting, then... I'm, I'm going to ask you to stop right okay. there. No, no, no. Because I want you to say that again, because I think this is the way to handle it. And so I want, I want this to stand out. I want everybody to pay close attention to this. Tell us as a listing agent, how you handle an escalation clause. So uh, whenever I get an offer that has an escalation clause, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll call the agent. If they haven't called me first, or even if they've called me first and they say that they're going to put one in, I don't really know the details until it's actually in my mailbox. Right. So once I read it, if the escalation clause says, you know, something along the lines, you know, willing to go, you know, $1,000 net to seller up, you know, up to 375,000, I'm just 
paraphrasing, right? Then I'll call the agent back and, and let them know that we're, we're just going to counter it at 375. Well, like if that's your best, in, if that's your best offer, then yeah. we'll just counter that. That's perfect. Hmm. You know, yeah. So, okay. And, and so then you're not dealing with that language and ongoing in the contract. You deleted that old language yes. and just come back at, at the right. highest price they said they would go. Right. Which they revealed to you by using an escalation clause. Well, yes, and it, it's more complicated actually now because we have so many offers, you know, mm -hmm. four, five, six, eight, nine, you know, 10 offers, 25 offers I've heard of recently. Um, but in my, in my own personal experience, I haven't had more than nine. And if there's escalation clauses in many of those, uh, then I will I'll just call those agents and let them know we're not sending out multiple counter offers because I don't want to put mileage in my uh, sellers. Mm -hmm. um, so to ask them, you know, to adjust their best and final. And based on the, the quality of the conversation, conversation and the responsiveness, responsiveness of the agent uh, via email for a phone call, text message, um, that is what I'm gonna pass along to my clients to help them arrive at who they would like to work with to counter back the highest on the escalation clause. And we wanna get that one done right away because if it's not gonna work out, then we have, multiple, we have other offers. And so, in most most of the cases, we're, we're allowing a 48 hour response time, so we can do everything behind the scenes and get a response like in a day or less, and we still have time to communicate with my other. So that's another way that you've changed your business a little bit. Did you you normally used a 24 hour response before? Yeah. And now you've done it 48. Yes, that's key. That's good to hear. David, anything else you want to add about what your things that are happening differently with buyers uh, to get them under contract these days? Or as a seller, how you're reacting to some of the things buyers agents are doing? Well, ultimately, it, it's up to the seller. Um, I think you, we're talking buyer fatigue. I'm also seeing that in the sellers. Um, when I go in and I represent nine offers, mm -hmm. and I say, okay, now we can counter offer everybody, or we can counter offer one or two of them. My seller, that in, in my in my one of my last uh, transactions. Actually, we're in we're in escrow right now. It's not even done yet. He's like, nope, just take the highest offer and the best that you, you can recommend. I don't want to deal with the counter offer. So there's a, you know, I'm like when, I, when I'm coming in, you know, I'm like, okay, this one says this and this and that. And I have my own, you know, spreadsheet that I can, you know, I can actually totally, you know, make it really easy, you know, so a five-year-old can decide. Um, so what about you guys? when you guys get many, many offers to present to a seller, do you do something similar with the spreadsheet? How yeah. do you handle that? Yeah, spreadsheet. Exactly. Yeah. What's the offer price, your earnest money, the type of loan it is, uh, the inspection period, uh, title, home, you know, uh, what they're doing on the HOA, what, what they want for home warranty, if, if one at all, all that stuff. And then at the bottom is net to seller and, and closing date. Yeah, I can imagine it'd be exhausting for a seller to go through a dozen yeah. offers yeah. if you don't cut to the chase. Like or 51, that. as I saw. Them on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you even present 51 offers. It's no, like, so, yeah. so the problem is, if, if you're like, Turn it. I'll just use the last the last uh, um, escrow that I have. Um, we accepted an offer that's $16,000 over asking. So if I'm going in and counter offering and now I get $20,000 over asking, $25,000 over asking, I still got to appraise. And I know, you know, when I when I price it at like 430 and now I'm setting it at 446, I'm pretty sure it's not going to appraise for 455, you know. So um, knowing your product, I think it's it's important on how you handle counter offers or the offers that are coming And preparing in. your seller for that. Yeah, I was right. just gonna say, we had a seller that I, I told him this is very optimistic. There's likely not a chance that this is going to appraise and you just need to know that. So when we come back down to reality, you're not let down. And that's exactly what happened is it came in, gosh, 20,000 under something like that. Mm -hmm. but I, I forget what the exact number was, but he called me, he goes, well, we knew this was gonna happen, let's just move forward. Right. And it was all good. But so the, setting the, expectations there's, a, is good. there's a quick remedy to that too like again in the same it's a condition the offer we accepted we also said this is gonna it, this we're gonna we're gonna need at least a six thousand dollar over appraisal guarantee in other words i'm pretty sure this is not going to appraise at 446 but i'm pretty sure it's going to appraise at least 440 
-hmm. So accept the fact that if it comes at 440, you will come up with the extra 6,000. Okay. And they agree. And so they and they agreed to that. And so they did an addendum or they did a count. How did you handle it? They ju I just had them write it in the offer. Okay. All right. And wait, now, if you were going to write something like that in an offer, where would you go to get that language? Of course, I would uh, check with my broker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so self serving. <laughs> I have one more we're doing. <laughs> I, I just want to mention some real quick. That type of clause, we've already written it. It's online at, on the intranet. And if you don't find it, just come to me and I'll, I'll get it. It's you. easier to come to you. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yes, sir. I just want to mention everyone here has already talked about inventory shortage and condition issues. And one thing that we are doing different is talking to our buyers about, you know what, let's not discount the ones that don't look like they should belong on HGTV. Let's go look, we walked into one recently and it smelled like they've been emptying their bomb water on the floor for the last 20 years. It was horrible, right? But I told them, I said, so another sales language, right? Just suppose, just suppose this could be remediated. We'll call Serve Pro and we did, we got a quote. Just say the price is an exorbitant and it can be remediated. Is this the home you'd still consider? Yes. So, you know, let's, another product that you can use is the renovation loan. Don't discount the renovation loan. You could look at a home that's distressed or just, you know, maintenance needs a has a lot of deferred maintenance. Uh, you could talk to your buyers about, you know, let's let's go after some of these homes that others possibly aren't entertaining because of their condition. And you can get a renovation loan, and all of the, you know, things can be totally taken care of before you even move in. And it'd be great. We actually had to do that last month. My buyer's uh, budget was six hundred fifty thousand dollars, and they wanted to be around Moon Valley. So every time a house came on the market. Uh, that 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 looked good to them. I had to drive 45 miles to get there to show them the house and not be able to, you know, to to get it and keep losing it. So we decided to look at houses that could be fixed up to their expectations, and we ended up with a house at 550, 560, and um, we budgeted forty thousand dollars to fix the house, and it's actually being remodeled right now, and. When all the things are set and down, we're at six hundred thousand dollars, and we got our dream home. That's awesome. Perfect. Hey, uh, Matt, we it's kind of been easy for us because we're just talking around the table here. Anything <laughs> else you want to add to to what you've been hearing? Yeah, I got you guys. Um, taking some notes, some good stuff. So, uh, one of the bigger things um, I think right now that we're using and language wise is. Uh, when showing buyers, if, if this, then that. So if this den had a door and had a closet, would this home work for you? Um, if the paint was done or if the carpet didn't stink, does this home work for you? And then, you know, if yes, then if that's something we can work through. More often than not, they're just, you know, buyers kind of get trapped into, oh my gosh, this price, and it doesn't meet my expectation. This isn't going to work. Um, so that's that's one thing. And then we are finding a lot of success with the pseudo appraisal waiver. So um, what I mean by that is pre basically pre negotiating it um, that our buyer is willing to pay up to two thousand dollars over appraisal up to purchase price. Um, and we've written at one time where just two thousand dollars over appraisal. Period because um, they were willing to do that. And number one, I like the I like the pre-negotiating. So my buyer has that expectation of what they're going to have to come out of pocket. I explain it just that it increases their down payment. And usually when I say that, it, it doesn't sound like they're, you know, versus saying you're overpaying by $2,000 because no one's going to really want to do that. Um, and then just moving forward with that knowledge that it's already negotiated out. Um, and I think some sellers, you know, if it's enough and they're really happy with that because, because a lot of their agents are preparing them for appraisal, possible appraisal issues. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you. Uh, I think, I think we had some great conversations today. I really appreciate you guys, uh, sharing this with the agents. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll do this uh, every month. I would love to see something like this. Yes, absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank thanks, you, for, thanks for listening in today. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Sorry you're not here. <laughs>
Yeah, I know. Cool. Me too. How's your, how's your daughter feeling? Is she good? Matt? Yeah, he's signed. Oh, he's he signed up. Matt, you want to go ahead Matt. and sign it up? Yeah, good luck with doing it. All right. All right. Thanks, hey, Mike. Thanks, guys. guys. That was 